I am told that uh, Mr. Gbani actually, Gbana actually joins us on the line. Well, Mr. Gbana, uh, good evening to you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, if you can hear me, uh, are you not actually embarking on a wild goose chase because the company that Sonia Sogli has said that no, these three workers will never be reinstated? Hello? Hello, Mr. Agbana. I can hear you loud and clear. Uh, uh, please, uh, it's not Mr. Agbana. This is uh, speaking the high uh, Sincere apologies there. Uh, we will be coming to you. Uh, but are you with the Ghana Mine Workers Union? No, please. No, please. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, you are with the jurors in the Western region demanding yes. a strike over your conditions of service. I will be getting yes. to you shortly, but uh, sincere All apologies right. there. We'll connect back to you for us to have that conversation. This is still Eyewitness News or 97.3 CTFM. Sincere apologies there. We are trying to raise Mr. Abdul Mumun Ghana. He is General Secretary of the Ghana Mine Workers Union to pick his thoughts on that demonstration earlier today against the Sonnen Asogli Power Company Limited. But before we get to him, let's hear from him because he actually addressed the press today when they demonstrated in Pune today. We all know why we are here today. Yes. Yes. We are being exploited by a Chinese employer called Sonnen Asogli. Yes. Yes. Our rights as workers have been abused by a Chinese employer called Sunan Asogli. Yeah. Are we going to sit down for this to happen? No. No. Will we sit down for this to happen? No. Shall we sit down for this to happen? No. Chobai! Yeah. Chobai! Yeah. Chobai! Yeah. They dismiss three of our leaders, our union leaders. For, uh, for absolutely no reason. They said because they joined the union and they, they chose to be elected as union leaders, they have to dismiss them. So boy, those of us here, are we not union members? Are we not employees of uh, employers? Do we not come from different, different companies? Yes. Yes. Chobai! Hey. Chobai! Hey. Why must Sunan Asogli be different? No. No. Why no. must Sunan Asogli be different? No. No. Chobai! Hey. Chobai! Hey. We will not sit down for this to happen to us. No. Our three union leaders must be reinstated. Yes. Chobai! Hey. They must be they must bring their father to the leaders. That's General Secretary of the Ghana Mine Workers Union, Abdul Mumin, who joins us via telephone. Mr. Mumin, good evening to you and welcome to Eyewitness News. Uh, good evening uh, to your listeners and good evening to your good self. Mm, very well. Today you held a protest or demonstration demanding the reinstatement of these three dismissed workers of the Sunan Asogli Power Limited. But are you not already fighting for a lost cause because the company says it is not going to reinstate these workers? Uh, well, it takes two to tango. If that is the uh, intransigent position the company has taken, then that is extremely unfortunate. I want to place on record that Ghana Man Workers Union, the PUC, do not agree with that position. We believe that these three union leaders did nothing wrong, absolutely nothing wrong. The only crime, according to the company they committed, is the fact that they joined the union and they volunteered to lead their fellow colleagues. And that is the only reason why they have terminated their appointment. And I can say for a fact that union leaders who unfortunately have been taken to you know this bizarre you know situation are among the best of workers of that company and so they can choose to take that intransigent position and the my workers union with the trade union congress position is that the three union leaders must be reinstated and that is absolutely non-negotiable 
non-negotiable, you say, but really, uh, why are you actually pushing for the reinstatement of these three workers? On what basis? Because the company, in a statement to clarify this issue, makes a number of, you know, allegations against you as a union. But before we even get to that, they say that the employment contract is not servitude and then and that either party to the contract may terminate the contract at any material time in accordance with the provisions of Act 651 and the contract. Do you want to disagree? I disagree completely. I, do, I disagree completely. What, is, what, what needs to be noted is the fact that um, every contract okay, has terms and conditions that regulate it. As I speak to you now, you cannot lash onto the fact that employment contracts are not servitude. And for that matter, you can get up one morning and just terminate an employee contract when there are laid down procedures that you must deploy. If you are minded to have read the response of Ghana Man Workers Union and for that matter, and for that matter, PUC to the press statement of Student Assembly, we have made it clear that the workers have a general conditions of service which requires you to prove culpability before you can simulate an employee's appointment. You cannot take that simplistic position and hide behind the fact that you do not need unions at the workplace to simulate employee's appointment. We cannot operate in a system like that. And so we disagree with that assertion. They know too well that they are mixing the facts. If you have a general conditions of service that say that, you need to prove culpability when an employee commits an offense. What offense did they commit? They committed absolutely no offense. Did you establish culpability? You did not establish culpability. So on what basis do you terminate the employee's appointment? That is absolutely a bad. And that's not something anybody can affect. Wage unions exist to protect the employment interests and for that matter the social economic interests of its members. As long as we remain a trade union, the trade union congress would not accept this position at all. Employment is not servitude, like they said. It's, it's, it's a service. And that is why there are terms and conditions that regulate the employment relationship. What they have done is just servitude. If you treat an employee, you treat labor, a few labor where a commodity that you buy off the shelf, and when you have exhausted or finished using it, you dump it in a dark bin. That is servitude. When you wake up in the morning, the worker dresses up to go to work. He gets to the gate and you hand a, 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 a termination letter to him. That is servitude. When an employee is off duty, preparing to come to work the following day, and you send a termination letter to him by email, that is servitude. When an employee is working, busily working in the office, you send the Ghana Police Service, you send men of the Ghana Police Service to go in there and escort him in the full glare of the public, treat him like a common criminal. That is servitude. So this company, their level of arrogance is just unbecoming. And I do not know where they're drawing all of these powers from. So my brother, let me put on record that they cannot claim that employment is not servitude, and for that matter, you can decide to do anything and have your way. It cannot happen that way. Not at all. As I speak to you now, Sunan Assembly is part of the Independent Our Producers Association. It's an employer's association. And this is a right guaranteed in the Labor Act. Employers have a right to come together. Why do they come together? They want to come together to form a common platform through which they can press home their common demands. Recently, they were arguing out there in the public space about the fact that government is indebted to them by way of payment of blah, blah, blah to the students to them. Why did they use the independent power producers platform to advocate for the interest of the employer? And so if workers decide to come together to freely exercise their fundamental rights, on what grounds would an employer stop such work, I mean, such group of workers by simply terminating the face of the union. If you cut the head of the union, do you want the union to exist? No, because that is deliberate 
It is calculated, and that is what they are, they are held bent on doing. Well, but the company uh, actually accused you of, you know, in intimidating them with your aggression in the fact that you illegally held a protest on their premises, which happens to be a security installation without authorization, and that your conduct was untoward. How do you react to all these allegations that have been leveled against you? My, my, my brother, they reference Section 131 of the Labor Act and proceed to say that what the union did with its members was unlawful. Let me say that Section 131 requires that you cannot barge into a company without you know, seeking the consent or the permission of the employer. We went under Section 129 of the same Labor Act. We wrote to Sunan Assembly on three different occasions requesting to meet with our members, members that we had fully disclosed to Sunan Assembly. I remember that Sunan Assembly is not the only employer operating within the labor market. We deal with several employers who recognize the rules of engagement and the fact that unions have the right to meet members or meet their members at the workplace. We wrote on three different occasions. Sunan Assembly blatantly turned down that request. We met with our members. I must say that we met with them in a public space. We met them under one hour. We, it was very civil. They are only concocting stuff to make it sound like the union had done something wrong. The union did absolutely nothing wrong. Trade the argument. They talk about 34 workers. How come that today they are talking about eliminating trade? Union leaders. How about the 34 workers that met with the union when the union engaged with them under one hour? Okay, so it is important that we remind ourselves that to every right there's a responsibility. And what is good for the Ganda is good for the good. What is good for Sunan Assembly is what they claim to project in the media space to say that the union gathered unlawfully and going under Section 131. But in equal measure, Section 129 puts an obligation on them to make it available, make space and make logistics available to a union to be able to operate in, at the workplace by meeting its members. And this should be done within, with, within 24 hours when the union requests to do so. On three different occasions, the union writes to but, you. But Mr. Mumin, Mr. Mumin if, if you, sorry to interject, but two wrongs obviously do not make a right. I want you to believe that. But if you are pushing for what is right or what is due your members, do you have to go to the company without permission? My brother, that's what I'm telling you that it is not as if we went to the company's premises to embark on any illegality. What, what did, did you not. go there to do then? We, we, met, we met with our members in a public space. We met with our members in a public space. All the workers that attended that engagement were off duty on the day. We met them under one hour. It was civil, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And so if they turn around and make that accusation, that obviously cannot go. But if you are minded, if you are minded, respectfully, I request that you, you read the 8th March release in the Daily Graphic, page 4 and 5, where we responded adequately to the press release of, uh, of Sunan Assembly on the 4th of May. Sorry, on the 8th of May, we responded to the press statement of the 4th of May. And we have detailed out what exactly the issues are. I see. So now that you've demonstrated uh, trying to get these three workers uh, reinstated, what's next for you as, as an association? Well, as a union, like I said, we are working with the trade union congress. We have seen the three affiliate unions of the TUC. We gathered at, at, at home, precisely right in front of the company today, to demonstrate. Now there are a series of actions that we have lined up and may not be able to disclose uh, them at the moment. But I can assure you that this fight is not over. We will not retreat and we will not surrender. The union leaders, like I said, did absolutely nothing wrong. As I speak to you now, if, I, if your employer walks into the room and hands over a letter to you and says you are terminated from employment, if you have a general conditions of service, or if you are unionized and you have, you have collective agreement, and that clearly laid down rules, uh, processes, and procedures that the employer is supposed to follow. Trust me, the labor law says that 
that takes preeminence or precedence or, 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 or prominence over and above any common law position of employment is not services, and for that matter, you can terminate at will. Nobody is a commodity. Labor is not a commodity. You cannot buy off labor, use it anyhow you want, and dump it. Like I said, the chairman has worked in Sony Nassau for 10 years. This is a very smart engineer that has worked in the company for 10 good years. The secretary worked in the company for eight good years. The assistant secretary worked in the company for eight good years. In all these years, they have been some of the best engineers that this company has. So if they decide to join a union and then make themselves available to meet their, their colleagues, for Christ's sake, how on earth can a, an employer descend on these three innocent young men in 21st century Ghana? Please, it just beats a bit imagination. But that's your raft of, but, but that's your raft of measures if you have considered. If they have conscience as an employer, which I expect them to have, we will go to this extreme. And so we are determined, we are not prepared. We are determined to ensure that these workers are reinstated. It is either their investment or the respect for the rights of the workers. You came in here with your investment, you went through the requirements enshrined in our laws. Ghana, and for that matter, the government gave you opportunity and an enabling environment to operate in. Why do you not want to give an enabling environment for workers to operate in? Why do you think that you must stifle the rights of workers just so that your business can thrive and you can make super normal profit on the basis of the sweat of these workers? And so for me, what is good for the land is good for the goose. On the balance of probability, that is where every well-meaning Ghanaian should be arguing and should be seeing these matters from. The rights that Stolen Assembly has, same rights apply to these workers. And so please, with the greatest of respect, if the Energy Commission, which is the regulator of that sector, decides today to withdraw the license of Stolen Assembly and tell them to pack out and leave, you know what they're going to do? You think they're going to go away without, without a fight? So please, these workers have done absolutely nothing wrong. They deserve to work in that company. And it is not for them to think that because they brought an investment, the rights of workers must be arrogated to the background. And for that matter, any issue to do with unionization of workers must not be held in that company. I think that our laws do not agree with that position. Mm. But, but finally, are you working with any timelines? Uh expiration of that particular deadline will lead to you triggering your next line of action and and that's your raft of measures actually are you considering you know legal action my brother the truth of the matter the truth of the matter is that when this whole matter broke up we we, we sent petitions to the ministry for uh for for for, for labor and employment to carry the Minister for Labor and Employment, and a uh, petition was served on the Minister for Energy, uh, on the Minister for National Security, on the Minister for Finance. In fact, we sent the petition on Tobi Absebe. Tobi Absebe, okay? The Royal Majesty of the of Abubomesia, right? We served these petitions on all of them. Interventions have been made one way or the other, but no positive response has come out of it. We are open to dialogue as much as we are open to all the other options that are available to us as we speak. Dialogue, the trade unions do not shy away from dialogue. Indeed, we are committed to social dialogue and that we are ready to engage any day, any time. But we also have a lineup of you know, uh, uh, actions that we will be embarking on. And so between now, I will not be able to give you specific timelines. I can, I can assure you that we have a committee that is appraising all the, everything that we do on a daily basis. And at every material moment, when it requires that we embark on any action, we will do so. What is important is that we will do what we have to do until these three innocent gentlemen are reinstated into that company. All right, you are grateful. That's Abdul Mumin, General Secretary of the Ghana Mine Workers Union.